tall corn groves. You can just see her father in the cornfield. Just barely see him. See him? She was a farm girl. And her father, besides raising crops on many acres, raised pigs. Those were the days of the horse and buggy. She loved to be in parades, in the special 4-H parade. She even was a good radiator ornament for an automobile. In December of 1940, she decided to go to California. She worked at Lockheed as a riveter and was named Rosie of the River nationwide. She worked side by side by the name of Dick Pendleton. They became good friends. Yes, then there was a chubby little lad from Gossel, Kansas. Or that was me. And as he grew up, he worked, he worked in his father's filling station and he worked in his father's garage. Yes, that was his father's garage there. Yes, and this is the home where he grew up, at the home of Mr. and Mrs. J.J. Ratzlaff. Yes, in early 1941, I decided to go to California and work at Lockheed. And I arrived there in late nine, March 1941. In early 1943, I moved into a small house right next to that of Dick and Ethel Pendleton, just a driveway between us. Yes, the same Dick and Eth Ethel that worked with Philman. In fact, that's what we met. Yes, the same Dick and Ethel Pendleton that Philman worked with at Lockheed. Yes, one day we were both invited to Dick and Ethel for dinner at their house. They lived right across the driveway from the house I lived in. We were there for a steak dinner, and I cut my steak, and the fork slipped, and the piece of steak went way up in the air, and it landed right in a cup of coffee. That sure broke the ice for that day. Do you remember that? Well, how could I forget a bun duo like that? But then everybody laughed, so I thought, well, as long as everybody else thought it was funny, I'd make allowances too, so. Yeah. Okay, we went ahead and later I went asked you to go to the beach with me. You remember that? Oh, I should say I did. That old sliver of yours broke down. It wouldn't run and I had to push it. Oh, well, okay. Then after several months, we decided to get married and we we married in, uh, in the St. Uh, what's the Francis name? de Sales. St. Francis de Sales Church in, in Studio City. Oh. All right. Six oh, okay. Well, there we had. There were about six people that came. Dick and Ethel was our best, our best band woman, or whatever you call them, and uh, that was a real short deal. So after that, why well, we went, uh, we had a little mess, and uh, we went back to Ethel Pendleton's house. And Ina, this friend of mine, the school teacher friend, I used to live with her at uh, her apartment in Los Angeles. So anyway, they had a big cake, and at that time you couldn't buy sugar, so this was a sweetened with some kind of stuff, and it almost made you sick. But anyway, we ate it. And then there was some punch, and or, and the boys didn't like that punch. They wanted something better, but they had to settle for punch. So anyhow, that was that was our big wedding. And then after that, why, we went to Riverside, and uh, there's an old inn over there called Mission Inn, and now it's a historic place, and now it's a really uh, well-known place. I think they've uh, torn a lot of it down since then, I understand, haven't they? Well, I think they've re re rebuilt it, built it re fixed it, yeah, because it was in the paper the other day, that it's an old landmark. So anyhow, we stayed there one night, then the next day, we really didn't have any plans at all, because it was war, and we only had... What day did we get married? Friday night. And On then, what day? Uh, September, uh, August 20. What year? I think 1993. 19... I mean, 19... Wait a minute, 43. 1943. Oh, boy. Well, anyway. Uh, anyhow, whatever. So then we went uh, the next morning after we'd stayed, uh, stayed at the Mission Inn, why, we went to Riverside. And we rented an old cabin there. 
and we rode the ski lifts. And uh, then we left for home the next day. That's about as long as we had time off. Well, there's one thing that I remember. On the way home, we had to stop by to get some peaches. Uh, and uh, when she got home, why she canned them. We had a total of $1.68 left. We had our rent paid and everything, but that's all the cash we had when we got uh, into the hunger. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I know. We did. We did. I think we had peaches, though. Yeah, we had peaches. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we invited Dick and Ethel to come and eat, and she said, did you can these peaches? She <laughs> couldn't believe how, how good they well, tasted. Well, they did turn out pretty good. Yeah. But anyway, then that, when they, they came over for Thanksgiving, and then we had two or three other couples. Okay, so we bought a live duck, and they took the head off from it where we bought it. So when we got it home, why, we didn't know how to pick it very well, and we had a heck of a time picking it, but we finally got most of the feathers off. We stuck it in the oven, and then uh, I thought I'd go check on it. So I opened the door, and it, it looked like a pin cushion. All the, the little <laughs> pin feathers came out of it, and I had to take it out and, and have Ori keep company in the living room while I picked the rest of the feathers off of the duck. So, uh, anyway, I don't know what happened. Well, what happened after that, well, I, I talked you into getting a different car before we were married. I traded that old clunker in for a 1940 Chevy, which was a real nice automobile. You remember that? Oh, yeah, that was a nice one. Okay. Yeah. And then a few months after we were married, well, the Army wanted him, so we, they got him. And uh, well, I had never driven this car and didn't really know how to drive a car. So he said, what are you going to do for a car? a car? You can't drive the car. So I drove it between Tahunga and uh, Glendale. He showed me how to shift the gears. I went in and got, I took my written, and I passed my written, and I had to ride straight up and down a hill with uh, the inspector. And I don't know how I did it, but I made it, and I got my license. So then after that... Yeah, uh, I was drafted into the Army and went to Tyler, Texas for our training up there. And then he, he wrote to me and told me, well, he wanted me to come there and uh, that he was going to be there permanently for six months. And I was expecting brandy, and I was feeling pretty lousy, but anyhow, I, I got in the old car and uh, headed out that direction. And it took me several days to get there. And finally, when I got there, I was supposed to have go to the... Uh, called the Army, and he was supposed to tell me where he had a room for me. Well, I called the Army, and they said he was out on bivouac for two weeks. Well, then I didn't know what to do, so I went to the UFO. That's where the wives go to when they don't know what else to do. And they help you get a room. Well, they didn't have a single room anywhere, nobody. So they told me to go to the YWCA, so I went there. And they had one old Army cot left, and there was about 25 or 30 women in the there so I was bigger than the cot but I could stay only one night so I managed to get through the night then the next morning I thought what am I going to do so I went out and started walking down the streets and I knocked at every door and I said have you got a room for rent so oh no 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 so finally I knocked on the door of an old house that looked like it was falling down and uh, I asked them if they had a room and the lady says, well, we've been thinking about renting one. I says, I'll take it. So anyway, so she let me come in, and she rented it to me. And it was a great, huge room. And uh, it had a fireplace in it, but it was older than the hills and had little holes on all the doors. They said that, uh, uh, oh, criminals used to live there and use them for peak holes when they could see the police coming. They, you know, they could see through the peak holes. So anyway, one night, it started raining, and oh, that old house leaked like a sieve. I just got soaked. And uh, so, in a racket, and the wind was blowing, and oh my gosh, such a time. So the next morning, I got up, and I went in the kitchen, and half of the house blew away. The whole side of the house blew away. It was a tornado. And then you got caught in the tornado. Yeah, I got caught. It was a tornado, and we were out on a night problem, on the last night problem of our our uh, deal, and um, uh, the two guys got killed, and I think about 18 or 19 got put in the hospital, and I was one of them. 
But after all, I think that's one of the best things that ever happened to me because uh, I had to start training all over again. And uh, if I hadn't done that, why I wouldn't have been there when uh, Brandy was born and helped her uh, take her to Gossel in the car, drive her down there. But I, th I think that's one of the best things that uh, happened to us. Uh, yeah, and uh, so then Brandy was just two weeks old when he had to go overseas. And I was staying with his mother because I didn't know where to, uh, any place to go. They're just You couldn't rent anything at that time. No, and if you had a baby, they wouldn't, motels or anybody wouldn't let you in. And there wasn't any rooms for rent. I don't know why. But uh, so I stayed with his parents for about a month. And his mother had to give me her bed, and I, I felt terrible about that. And Brandy had a uh, bad stomach that he threw up all the time. And so it was really quite a problem. So then I went back to my home. Well, then my mother had to give up her bed. Where and was she that had to, at? That was in Iowa. Okay. Yeah, that was in Iowa. And so then I stayed there a little while, and then she, it wouldn't work out. She didn't have a bed anymore. So then I had to go to Ethel's, this one's at our friend's that was at our wedding and she had rented a place and so she let me come there and I stayed we stayed there four months and she got evicted so then I had to go someplace else so then I went to Omaha and I got a job working for my boarding room and that didn't work out so then Ori wrote me a letter his dad wrote me a letter and said he found a room for me and Gossel lady a lady uh, rented this old house one room of her old house it didn't have any uh, toilet or any water or anything like that. I had to use the neighbor's uh, back house and I had to carry water from the neighbors and I didn't have a, uh, anything to wash the clothes of Brandy's in. I, all I had was an old dish pan and so anyway uh, they had an auction next door to that place and uh, they had a, some of oh, those old galvanized uh, bat tubs, you know, wash tubs and I thought, oh boy, I'm going to get one of them. So I was uh, going to bid on him, and then Brandy got the uh, screaming his head off, and I had to go attend him, and by that time, the tubs were gone. And uh, the man that bought him, he was taking all of his stuff home, but he didn't have room for the tubs, so he was going to come back later. Well, as soon as he got out the driveway, I grabbed the tub and ran in the house with it and shut the door. And uh, so, so then he came back, and he got all of his stuff, and pretty soon I got a call from Oric's dad. And he says, uh, uh, or, uh, 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 let's see, Oric's dad told, gave me my, my phone number. And the man called me, and he says, uh, Mrs. Raslaff, I know you got my wash tub, and uh, I want it, but I'll let you use it. He says, I know you need a tub real bad, and I'll let you keep it until the war's over, until you leave. So he let me use the wash tub, so at least I had a wash tub. And... Uh, then, oh, how long was it after that? Uh, I don't know where else. I guess I went two or three places after that before he finally got home. Yeah, I was in the Army for uh, almost two years, really, really close to two years. And then she picked me up uh, in Omaha, and it was snow, 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 and we decided to come back to California. So here we are back in California, and we're going to celebrate our 50th anniversary on August 20, 1993. This, of course, shows that handsome couple on the day they got married, a blissful marriage. Yes, a real married bliss. Nobody's fooled, not on your life. Your happy home is full of strife. When neighbor hear your general bouts, blow by blow, they're real knockouts. And of course, here is, here is the result of our marriage. This was taken at John Donnett Place probably about in 1990 with the whole family together. Isn't that beautiful? Talk about final outcome. This is it. And talk about a beautiful family. You just can't beat it anywhere. So you may want to take a little time to scan all of these pictures. This is really something. I can't even count them while I'm taking the picture, so... Uh, 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 that's all for now, folks.